And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. The word of the Lord. Let us alternate my verse, the reading of the printed portion of Psalm 31, found on page 3, beginning on this side of the worship space. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me ever be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. In the body of your ears for me, and in the living. In my strong rock, a counsel to keep me safe. For you are my friend and my son of Lord. For the sake of your name, lead me in and I take your power upon me that they have seen with respect to me. For you are my power of strength. Into your hands I commend my spirit. For you have been me, O Lord, O God, of truth. My son is in your hand, ready to be on the hand of my enemies. May your faith shine upon your servant, and in your loving kindness save him. The second lesson is reading from the first letter of Peter. Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourself be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into its marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. To you, Lord Christ. Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, 
I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you show, how can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these. Because I am going to the Father, I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, on this particular weekend, there is no small amount of things that have happened to to be able to uh, preach about. I mean, I think the first thing on everybody's mind is, of course, Padres versus Dodgers. <laughs> and secondly, the run for the roses. I. I heard one of our members, a member of the vestry, speaking just before the service started, saying that he had won copious amounts of money on yesterday's race. Uh, he backed five of the horses in the race, none of which won place or show. <laughs> I'm sure several of us are in that particular situation. Mass shooting, a couple of those a day, that's no big deal anymore. Lots of things to be concerned with and aware of. It's only three days till Mexican Mother's Day, which is May 10th, always, every year. And you know that the American version of that is coming up next Sunday. I know we went to IHOP for breakfast today for Mother's Day because we wanted to meet the crowds. Yeah. <laughs> we did next week. In the great 50 days of Easter, which is bookended by Easter and Pentecost, we are treated in the, in the readings for Sunday from uh, the Acts of the Apostles, replacing the lessons from the Hebrew or Old Testament scriptures. And it seems only appropriate because the Acts of the Apostles is a travelogue of sort of the work of the earliest Christian community. It's 
and how it functions post resurrection. We know that thousands converted to the way, the way of Jesus Christ. They were called Christians at that time. And we know that they sold their possessions and held things in common, all of their resources with each other, a very bizarre way of functioning. They were inspired. And today we hear about one of them, a man by the name of Stephen. Peter and the other, some of the other apostles had been uh, beaten and imprisoned, and they were also very busy teaching. And so they chose some individuals from the rest of the group who were outstanding and who would serve in specific ways. Who is Stephen? Well, we know that he is full of faith and the Holy Spirit. He is described as such. He was chosen to help distribute food to the needful. His role is serving. Or in the Greek, diakonos. Remember a few weeks back when Deacon Cindy was here? She talked to us about that role of the diaconate of serving and how important it was in the early church and how important it still is. We even voted on that day, remember? She asked us to fill out little pieces of paper and put the name of a person you thought was appropriately a servant. Uh, and I have kept all of those and I'm using those to blackmail you. <laughs> Because I will turn you into the bishop and you will get made into a deacon. It is unlikely that you will be stoned to death, however. But even in that early community of the faithful, there were naysayers within and without. And though it was a great time in the historical church, it was not without its painful moments. Just as Stephen and others took on their serving roles, enemies of the way leveled accusations against him and some of the others. They accused him specifically of blasphemy and false teaching. He rebuts their falsehoods with a sermon about Israel's history of persecution against their prophets, which infuriates the high priests and remember, the high priests are not the good guys. They had some very negative things to do in the trial of Jesus. And they drag him outside of Jerusalem. And he is killed by stoning. And an interesting sidelight, and it's in the gospel today, the cloaks of those who were getting warmed up and didn't want to be impeded by their heavy cloaks while they threw those rocks at Stephen to kill him were placed at the feet of a man named Saul, who later did some significant things in the church when he had that moment on his way to Damascus and then was renamed Paul. Stephen is known as a proto-martyr, the proto-martyr. When I first heard that, I had no idea what it meant. But if you know the word prototype, which means first of something, you know, the, the proto-martyr, he was the first martyr, the first one martyr for faith in Jesus after Jesus himself. Violent mobs, individuals, are not relegated to the first century church or the first century of the common era in the Holy Land. You just have better weapons now. Rocks are so Stone Age, if you will. Supposed to that was supposed to have elicited a, a mild <laughs> titter, but it didn't, did it? I mean, I, I had to beg for it, but I appreciate those who came in when I did. The challenge in John's Gospel 
And this is a passage that we read every Monday, Thursday evening when we're in Duddington Hall having our dinner after uh, washing the feet and before the strip, stripping of the altar back in here. And the, the challenge of John's Gospel is that it, it contains diametric opposition or, or things that are contrasting or paradoxes. There is beauty and peace in John's Gospel and today we we heard as Jesus talked to his followers at the Last Supper, do not let your hearts be troubled. Isn't that a sweet, lovely saying? Don't worry. And then that's contrasted by the passion of Jesus, also found in John's Gospel, where Jesus is murdered by the Jews. Now that means the Pharisees, it means the authorities of the temple, it means the high priests, but for centuries, and even now, the Jews have come under great disturbances in their lives because they killed Jesus, who was by the way, also a Jew, and all of his followers, at least at first, were Jews. And he wasn't killed by the Jewish people, he was killed by the authorities. And they were, as we know, as sometimes happens, corrupt and trying to maintain their own power. And Jesus promises, I will come again. What a wonderful thing to hear, even as they were trying to understand in their confusion what Jesus was telling him, telling them about his imminent departure. I will come again. And even hearing that and wanting to believe it, they still got it caught up, as John told us, in betrayal and doubt and confusion, despair. This was not a perfect group of disciples by any means. He assures them, my father's house has many, many dwelling places. It's inclusive. It has room for many different peoples, maybe even different faiths, is what some of us would read into that. But he also says, no one comes to the Father except by me. And he says, I am the way and the truth and the life. And those who know me and see me know my Father and see the Father. But if no one comes to the Father except by me, then isn't that making it less than inclusive? Isn't that saying there's only one way to get there? And anybody who's not one of us isn't going? People have used that for the last few millennia to indicate that there's only one group that gets in. There's only one group that gets it. That's only one group that matters. And if you're not one of us, You're not going. But maybe Jesus was saying instead, you have everything you need to find your way to the Father through me. I've taught you everything. I am sufficient. Trust in me. And yet people still do, and maybe this is the, the worst thing going on right now, that horrible case of the woman from Idaho who murdered her children and helped murder her soon-to-be husband's wife and helped to murder her husband and the man she wanted to marry who helped murder was an evangelist, a Christian. That isn't the way to get there. Jesus says, don't follow that kind of stuff. Don't get caught up in things that don't really resonate with what I'm talking. 
and the beauty in John's gospel. Believe in me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. God's unity is deeply and mystically inspiring. But then there's the confusion. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. How many of us have asked for something in Jesus' name? And felt deeply, deeply disappointed when we didn't receive it. I've said this story before, but it's worth repeating. It's from a long time ago. I was a chaplain for the Youth Guidance Center in San Francisco. As misnamed anything that I've ever heard of, it was a juvenile detention center. There was very little guidance being given you, other than the guidance of get behind that door, clang, stay in that cell. And I encountered a, a young man who was deeply disturbed at being there. And he was desperate. And I met with him because he asked to see a chaplain and we prayed together and we talked and I, I tried to give some perspective to his situation. And I thought I'd done a fairly decent job, but came back, that was on a Thursday, and I came back the following Tuesday and he had asked to see me again and his face was beaten to a bloody pulp. And I had no idea what had happened and I, I asked him and, and he said, well, there was a group who came here to do services on Sunday and I went to the services and I told them my story and, and they said, you just need to pray to Jesus. You pray in your cell and you pray well enough and hard enough and that door will just open and you can walk out. So he prayed. Long. And sincere. He prayed in Jesus' name. And they had quoted this scripture to him. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. And the door did not open. And the people at the jail told me afterwards, he stood at the door and held on to the bars and the window and beat his head against that door until we had to come and take him to the infirmary and sedate him. Even in the beauty of Jesus' promises and John's gospel, there comes confusion. Do we blame the asker? We cite impatience or not enough faith, a lack of recognition of the real answer that comes, or how do we explain that one away? I know my stock answer over the years has been uh, sometimes the answer is nobody. That's right, it's somebody else's stock answer too. Sometimes the answer is no, or sometimes the answer is wait. Or sometimes the answer is you're praying for the wrong thing. God's wisdom is so hard for us to aspire to or to grasp when it comes that we oftentimes just can't do it. Some of you know a little something about Taizé, uh, the, the spiritual community in France that is uh, interdenominational and uh, accepting, inviting. It embodies a lot of the wonderful things that John's gospel, the beauty of John's gospel. And they, they have some prayers that are set and that they utilize in their liturgies. And I'd like to share one of them with you as closing. Living God, at times we are strangers on the earth. Disconcerted by the violence, the harsh oppositions. And you breathe upon us the spirit of peace like a gentle breeze. Transfigure the deserts of our doubts 
And so prepare us to be bearers of reconciliation wherever you place us until a hope of peace arises in our world. Turning to page five, let us join together in the recitation of the words of our faith in the Nicene Creed. We believe in the one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Father, the Almighty, the Father, the Almighty, the Father, the Almighty, the we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and Son, he has given to our heart. He has spoken to the promise. Even the Holy Catholic, Catholic and Apostolic Church, we adopt to the baptism of the sinners, we will live with the rest of the earth, and all the lives of those to come. Amen. Powered by the Lord's promise that He will do whatever we ask in His name, let us pray, saying, We ask this in Jesus' name. For the Church of God and for its leaders, that our lives may be for the glory of God alone, let us pray. We have to say Jesus' name. For more vigorous efforts to unite all Christian peoples, lest factions and jealousies prevent the spread of the gospel, let us pray. We have to say Jesus' name. For all who exercise the ministry of preaching, that their words may be full of the Spirit and of wisdom, let us pray. Because For those among us whose hearts are troubled and anxious, that they may find support in our care. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. For this local community, that our belief in God will be deepened by the word and sacrament we share. Let us pray. We ask this in Jesus' name. Here you may offer your own, your own intercessions, either aloud. Lisa and Anne. Amen. Sydney. Amen. For Katie and Katie and Carolee and Valerie. Amen. For Nicholas. Amen. For Georgia. Amen. Melissa. Amen. For Bobby and Peyton and Mary. Amen. For Christopher and Carly, Sean and Miranda, for the people of Alabama. Amen. For Jerry and Angie. Amen. Amen. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, we bring these and all our needs to you. Filled with confidence in the power of Jesus' name. Hear us and answer our prayers in your great wisdom and love. We ask this through Christ, who is our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us greet one another by sharing Christ's peace. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs> resurrection of your son Jesus Christ our Lord for he is the true Paschal lamb who is sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world by his death he has destroyed death and by his rising to life again he is one for us everlasting life therefore we praise you joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name Oh, 
sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. <laughs> To celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling the death, resurrection, and ascension of and, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask for your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray in song. Kingdom, the world, the glory. Oh, 
Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. of God for the people of God. Oh, 
Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for creating us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are to be members of the body of your Son and the heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to you. You have given us to you to love and serve you as we are the students of our discovery. We give them to you to the Holy Spirit, who will love and glory, and all and forever. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children, through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Please be seated unless you'd like to come forward for a birthday prayer, an anniversary prayer, or a traveling prayer, or any combination of those three. Anita, I wouldn't even try to guess, but just... Would it be a family birthday? Yes. <laughs> My great grandson just turned three. Wow. <laughs> Very exciting. Okay. Where do they live? Oh, okay. That's your trips to the East Coast there. Okay. Yeah. Very good. And the travel. My daughter comes from our old friend. Her name is. Okay. Okay. Very impressive. Lots of fun. I bet she gets pretty pictures. Yes. Already? <laughs> Instant gratification. Diana? Uh, traveling. I'm going on a cruise to Alaska. I had to cancel last year because of a rupture appendix. Oh, yeah. So we have to reschedule. Well, that's good. So, no medical emergency planned for this week? Okay, good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> Elizabeth? Uh, to, um, my birthday, I'll be left down again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, um, because I'm in the <laughs> May I ask where you're traveling? Brooklyn, 
Fantastic. Okay. Lots of fun. Yeah. <laughs> you don't go back there for your birthday anymore. Okay. <laughs> Michael, Mary. So, um, well, two birthdays when I graduated high school will be 15, Ben Newman. Um, and, <laughs> and will you be the same age as your grandson? Irish. <laughs> you don't want to be 15 again. No, I'll be 77. Oh, my golly. Yeah. The look of incredulity on the faces of these folks. I wish you could have seen it. It's just incredible. They do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, you do have something. I do. Okay. I'm bit. I need to read it. So I have, well, a sister who died at birth, but she was being eight, so tomorrow she would have been 47. Mm -hmm. And then, um, well, then my daughter, she's doing, she's going to do the, the Kathy Wood trip back down. She's taking the coast back down from school. So she, I thought about you. So she's mm -hmm. wanting to see the ocean since she's been in Idaho for so long. Um, coming back for her home for a couple of months. Uh, and then I'm celebrating my birthday. While I'm in the prison, I've been from Chilla at Valley State. So, <laughs> I'm having a friend, so I have to write out some stuff. We're just glad that they let you out. <laughs> so you can spend some time with us. That's great. My daughter says every time I tell them, oh, yeah, my mom likes to spend her birthday in prison. And they're like, no. Oh. <laughs> Very good. Uh, there are big celebrations in prison for birthdays. <laughs> How old are you? I will be 58. Okay. And another look of incredulity. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah. Elizabeth, do you want to chirp in with yours? 76. A mere child. Okay. Well, traveling and birthdays, it sounds like. Did I miss anything? Is that okay? We'll offer a traveling prayer. Gracious God be with those who travel, keep them safe in their journeys. May their time apart from those who love them here be a time where they encounter others who love them and bring that love that they share from you to those they meet. Help them to do what you call them to do and walk the path that you call them to trod so that they may share your love with others. In the name of your son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Watch over thy children, the Lord, as your days increase. Bless and guide them wherever they may be. Bring them to the sand, comfort them with courage or sorrowful, and release them up they fall, and in their hearts may thy peace which passes understanding about the days of their lives. Through Jesus our Son, our Lord. Amen. Happy travels. Wonderful birthdays. Nice tulip pictures. <laughs> Well, I neglected, of course, to, to mention the, the biggest event of the week, and I apologize to the Crown, uh, yeah. but the uh, wonderful coronation yesterday of King Chuck. What's the song about King Chuck? <laughs> Maybe that's King Chuck, but anyway. Um, the, uh, uh, it's fascinating to me to, to uh, watch other clergy in action. And I've got to say, I am not at all impressed by Archbishop Welby's uh, blessing uh, gesture. That's this. <laughs> it's just, uh, I mean, give some definition to it. You know, this or this, or, you know, even this. I don't care, but just the blessing of God of the Son and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Also, and I don't know, Meg, did you notice this? Uh, I haven't watched it yet. You didn't watch? Oh, well, spoiler alert. <laughs> he, he broke the bread in the prayer of consecration where it says he took bread and broke it. He didn't break it at the end where we break it. I don't get it. I mean, well, he's a secret loop. He's a secret loop. But saying that, I, I just assume nobody asked Mother May uh, what she thought about how I conducted this. So it's nice to have you with us. We'll discuss it out. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and she holds up her notes. <laughs> Great. Okay. Anyway. Um, oh, big deal. We have a sign up here for the Pentecost Gospel, which is uh, three weeks from today, Pentecost. And we need people who can at least fake one sentence in another language. Um, and we will assign those once we see what we've got here. But we ask for your name and your email and your language choice. You may put several languages down if you can fake it in several languages. Uh, you know, I think of Dr. Steve. He can fake it in Swahili. He speaks Spanish. He has a rudimentary understanding of English. And he speaks dog and cat. So um, you know, those all work. So you put them all down. Anyway, uh, once we get the signatures, basically we'll give you a couple of weeks to get your signature on here, you know, your language choice, etc., on here. And then uh, I'll break down the gospel for that day, which is uh, John, I don't remember what it is, but anyway, it's from John. And um, we'll assign those and I'll get them printed out in the language that you've chosen. Uh, with one exception, if, if uh, Kathy puts down Dulla, again, she's going to have to get her own translation because, believe it or not, I don't have access to a Gullah Bible. I guess that means I'm not gullible. Last year you found it on the internet. Pardon? You found the gullah on the internet. That's true. That's true. You do? Well, there you go. Okay. So we got to see two gullahites. Okay. Anyway, we hope that uh, we'll get a, a number of people participating. Also, one more time, I want to emphasize the forward day by day. We have a few booklets left. If you missed out on getting one, or if this is just too heavy to carry with you, um, you can get it online, get it on your smart device, except for Diana. And uh, who doesn't have a smart device, who doesn't want a smart device, will never use a smart device. So um, you can get that uh, daily uh, reading from scripture and uh, uh, the little meditation that goes with it, the prayers that are suggested. And it's a wonderful way to keep things going from Sunday to Sunday in your spiritual development. Um, anything that you would like to say about the uh, stop? Oh gosh, three people over here think they want to say something. Great. Uh, and Dale wants to always say something. <laughs> Ladies first. <laughs> Age before beauty. We can say my van is going to help me here. So, so we have so many clipboards. Now we know what happened to the one we don't have. Um, but anyway, also, I did watch a bunch of the coronation and I was fast forwarding, but I thought of Diana through the whole thing because it's all in right line. And she, it, I don't know if you watched it, but I did. you go for it. You'll be inundated for like weeks. It's so, Mother's Day is coming up. There are two sign up sheets. One, are you coming? Are you going to show up? And the other one, if you're going to bring food, men, this is you. The women shouldn't have to cook on Mother's Day. It's very simple. Arthur has volunteered to cook. I think he's going to do that breakfast burrito thing. It was really good the last time. So for we just have a very simple sign-up sheet. Spanish rice, not too hard to make. Buy it somewhere, gentlemen, if you don't know how to make it. Some small pastries, not too big because we're dainty. We, we're not going to do like a whole donut. And then fruit. So you can cut it up yourself, buy a platter, whatever you want to do. So just those things that ought to be a nice breakfast for Mother's Day. So if you're coming and if you're bringing some food. And then um, uh, Thursday, May 18th is Ascension Day. Father mentioned that. Uh, a sign up sheet if you're coming. But there, because there's going to be a meal, Father Leland, I think, is doing a tri-tip. Is that right? So, pretty good. And so the side dishes are here, various things, potato pasta salad, bean salad, green salad, fruit salad, sir. So um, if you're coming, let us know. If you're bringing food, also let us know. So all of this stuff, plus the regular sign-up sheet for regular Sundays is there. It's it's like a forest of this stuff. So you just have to make sure you find the right one. They're different colors. 
purple ascension day, pinkish red for mothers with hearts. So I don't know what the other ones look like. So the yours just plain. I don't know. What plain. Yeah. Plain for the for the words. Okay. The, the, um. That's it. Yeah. One other thing. Oh, okay. Um. On Ascension Day, oh, okay. the service will be outside okay. and the dinner will be inside. Okay, so there we are. Well, we that ought to do it. And the weather should be nice, hopefully, for all of that. So I think that's it. The 14th and the 18th. Yeah. Ascension service starts at 5.30 and that will be followed by uh, a dinner. Okay. Yes, and it does say that. I just didn't read the time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I want to mention the Holy Happy Hour Bible Study, Tuesdays, 7 p.m. You can get the link, uh, it's on Zoom, you can get the link uh, uh, through the news from the pews. We're studying um, uh, St. Paul's letter to the Philippians. It's going, they take a little baby steps all the way through it, so you'll never, you haven't missed all that much going forward. You won't have missed a thing. You can catch up really easy, and we're having a lot of fun. So please join us. Thank you. Before we head over to Nuttington Hall for uh, the repast, let's sing hymn 518. <laughs>